So um, in our class today, we'll be talking about introduction to data analysis, um, KPIs are metrics. So we're going to understand what KPIs are and what metrics are, the difference between KPIs and metrics and how to identify the ones you need to track. Then we'll also be talking about analyzing and interpreting your product data. And finally, you, um, we would work together on a like some form of group work on how to analyze um, qualitative user research data using thematic analysis. And in the middle, we'll be doing um, some form of group breakout session or something. Gladys, I hope you'll be able to help me with that. So um, moving on, please, is there a way to like group um, everyone on the call into different groups? And the, the point of this is to, is that in your group, you all will discuss these four pictures and you make one story out of it and then you pick someone that represents your group and you come back to this call to present your story using these four pictures. Should I explain again or does that make sense? Um, um, please explain again while I just try to settle okay. up. For them. Okay, so four pictures, one story basically means you're going to use these four pictures to make a story. So you're going to tell a story using these four pictures. Your story can be anything. It does not have to go like, it does not have to go a story about donuts. You want, I want to see how you can bring different parts, different things into one story. So there's a picture of a donut of a lady of a swan and Instagram logo. I don't know what that is going to mean to you, but in your group, you discuss how you can make this into one story, like a paragraph, not a full long story. And then someone from your group, you choose someone to represent your group. And that person will come back to the wider group to explain to us what you guys in your group have discussed as the story. Does that make sense? Yeah, like four picks, like four picks, one word. So instead of four picks, one word, it'll be four picks, one, one story. Okay. Super, so Gladys. Okay, so um, it's gonna be 11 participants per room. And okay. yeah, we're going to create about three breakout rooms. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to do that now. Okay. So we have, we have, let's say, what's the time now? So let's say we have seven minutes. When is 5.50? We should come back. All right, guys. Um, guys, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> The audio is breaking, is it? It's fine know. on my end. It's fine on my own end. Guys, just confirm, is the audio fine on your end? Okay. Okay. It's, it's really good on my own end, right? Really clear. All right. All right, now. Um, well, Tony, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so everyone is now in their rooms. Okay. Um, trying to assign this person that is not yet somewhere. Okay, good. I'm staying outside the room. Okay, that's fine. Jemima, Emmanuel, you guys are yet to join your 
broom. Chou dulu apa? Rukoyat, you have to join your room. Abayomi, you have to join your room too. Okay, it's already there. Rukoyat, why have you not joined the room? Okay, she's there now. Um, who else is still outside? Emmanuel, why are you not in your class, in your room? Joshua and Jemima. So I've informed everyone that they have five more minutes to go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too. Your obi is back in time to take care of um, Asha. Yes, yes? thank you. Ah, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I can even hear them from, because I'm in the room. And okay. they're in the oh. room, so I can hear them. Oh. Nice. Okay, Monday and Olushe, you just joined in. So we have breakout rooms and I'll just assign you guys to your different rooms. Um, there's a task ongoing there, so you can just join them. This is going to be fun. <laughs> so random <laughs> pictures. <laughs> the pictures are so random. Like, why do we have this one? <laughs> And then there's donuts and the woman that looks like like a Brit the British Prime Minister. The head shots the right. Prime Minister. <laughs> Are you still seeing my screen? I'm not at the moment. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, what they call it now? I'm just going to check what's, what's next. I have one minute more.
Okay, we're almost done. I'm gonna close all the rooms in a minute. All right. So. So welcome back, guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. You never finish. Wait till now they talk about. <laughs> you want to write essay? <laughs> You're just <a> sweet. <laughs> I knew you would be doing that, my boy. <laughs> All right. Um, room one, room two, room three. Representatives, just raise up your hands and fall out. Raise up your hands in the chat. Um, just one representative from each group. Abayomi or Ruka, please choose one person. Don't give me the stress of choosing for all of you. Don't put me through that stress, please. So is everyone- Abayomi is representing group one. Okay. Abayomi, over to you. Hello, are you there? Yes, I am. I want to share my screen so that we can. Yeah, so okay. group, one, um, group one's representative is about to give us a story. Please make it as fast as possible. Yeah, let's go there. Okay, so we have a pretty lady um, who was sitting by the lake. Um, scrolling through our Instagram feed. She's an Instagram influencer. Um, she was sitting right there, a, a, a swan swam by and was looking at her curiously. Um, a few minutes later, her boyfriend arrives with a box, a box of um, donuts for her. As she receives the box of donuts and opens it, the swan suddenly flies from inside the water and um, starts pursuing her with the box of donuts. Um, <laughs> Being that she was an Instagram influencer, she wasn't sure um, whether anybody was around that could take unflattering pictures of her. At the same time, she was scared of the swan. At the same time, she wanted to keep her donut. So she kept on running with the donut instead of dropping it. The swan kept on pushing her. Eventually, she fell down. And after falling down, getting up, she looked around and she was, uh, she gave the sign of relief, seeing nobody saw her. But the following day, she saw her pictures all over Instagram again because somebody ended up taking our pictures and posting on flashing pictures of her on instagram end of the story thank you <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> okay that was a good one <laughs> that was good i had to mute myself because i was just laughing oh my god that was I, very good <laughs> that, that was a good one <laughs> that was very good all right let, let's, let's go and see how many people can beat that let's go and see how many people thank can you. beat that one thank you abayomi that was really good <laughs> okay group two where are you guys <laughs> hi good evening hello stephanie good evening yeah so i'll be representing group two and this is our story so rose is a shutterbug um photographer who loves taking pictures of everything and anything. She's not really a professional photographer and she enjoys blogging and she opens, um, happens to have an account with Instagram. So she went to a coffee shop and she saw um, an array of snacks, including donuts, and she decided to take a picture of it. So after taking a picture of it, she went by um, to the nearest park, sat down and close to the park was um, a lake, or would I say a, uh, a, a river where there was a, a swan. She got attracted to it. She took pictures of it and also posted 
on Instagram. Thank you. And that's our story. Oh, okay. that is really great. A really great one, actually. All right. Thank you. Um, sounds more like sounds more like the story of a te- Texas. One yes. Of it sounded like the story of a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of my other sounds more like the story of a storyteller in Hollywood, like someone that writes movies. <laughs> yeah, so group two, thank you. Um, last but not the least, definitely group three. Who is going to be your representative? Okay, hi, uh, good evening, everyone. So um we are working with the story, okay, there's this lady, she's a product manager named uh, Jane, and she's on vacation at Lake Tao in the United States. So okay. at the lake, she found this beautiful swine, and she was like, okay, I can just take a picture of this beautiful swine, and because she loved nature, she's someone that loved nature. While taking the picture, she saw a vendor selling donuts by the beach, or uh, by the side of the, of the lake, and she decided to just buy it. So she took a picture of herself and created a real Instagram reel out of it. So that's our story. All right. Uh-uh. So Take it. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed these stories. And what um what I was trying to look for in all the stories, I got it. And I'll say that we can call ourselves product managers because <laughs> your stories had your user persona and the first one was very captivating because you could even see the pain point <laughs> of the of the lady i felt i felt really really you know sad for her you know being chased by this one carried a full box of donuts so um now with this with this icebreak i want to ask you just one question because i know you've done your user research what story is your data telling you I know sometimes you look at feedback and surveys and stuff and you're like, this, this don't even match up. But in the end, there's a story that this data is trying to tell you. I'll get more into that as we move on. Now, introduction to data analysis. Data analysis is like a myth. Sometimes when people say it, you feel like it's something very mat- mat- mathematical or like you need to know how to, how to, you need to know, have some idea in statistics and all that. But data analysis is simply looking at your data and using the insight you get from it to make informed decisions. And when we talk about data, what are the um, what types of data out there for us as product managers? First, the user data. This are like the information you collect from your users. From a, let's say you have a product already. What are your users? data, that is what are their preferences, their needs, their demographics, their behaviors, expectations, and all that. So that is specifically called user data. Then there is the product data. So these are the um, metrics related to a product. You collect this and you analyze this throughout your product lifecycle. Example, bounce rates, um, adoption rates, churn rates, you know, there are so many metrics when it comes to a product data, but this data refer to how your product is doing in the markets. And then market research. Now, this is a continuous process that helps you identify what your competitors are doing. And it will help you also know how you can set yourself apart. And this is very good, especially if you've not even started um, working on your products from the very beginning to know what additional value you can add to your products so that people will buy your products. And um, as I'm going, please feel free to um, stop me anytime if you have any questions. I might not be able to see the chat, um, but if there's a question, please raise your hand or anything. And if I'm going too fast, please let me know. So when we talk about data analysis, as a product manager, why is this important to you? Firstly, it's to help you identify user needs. So you know what your users are expecting or what problems they are going through. So when you collect and analyze your um, user data, you're able to gain insights into how your users interact with your products. And then you, you're, you're able to understand what features are important to them and where they might be encountering difficulties. And 
you collecting and analyzing this data helps you to um, helps your product to be successful. Why? Because the users will see that you are you're delivering a product that meets their needs, that solves their problems, and they will keep coming back to you. Then also, you'll be able to make data-driven decisions. And the reason why it's important for you not to rely on you know, intuition or guesswork is because this is the real world. Like, you cannot just make decisions, or you cannot just say you want to build a product to help people. Let's say, for example, you want to build a product to help people do a certain thing, but what data is backing your decision in building your products in a certain way? If you analyze your data, re user research, surveys, um, your product data, it will help you make correct, precise decisions on how you can make your products, a, how you can make the best product or make your products better. Now, it also help you, data analysis also help you measure product performance. And the way this works is that when you've released a product, you use metrics like user engagement, conversion rates, churn rates, to kind of see how your product is doing in the market. Is your product meeting the needs of your customers? What are they saying about it? Is there anything you need to add to your product to make it better? Or is your product even helping you get return on inve investment, ROI? Are you making money from these products? And it also helps you understand like identify areas of improvement for your for your products or maybe for a feature. Sometimes I've seen situations where a product was launched with some features and those features were removed at the end of the day because they saw that those features were not performing well. And it is data analysis that helps you get insights on all these things. Now, <clears throat> there are some questions that you, you want to use data to, to um, to understand questions like, what happens to my products after it was released? What is the current state of my products? Can my products be better? Do users like my products? If not, what are their expectations? How do you get answers to these questions? Simple answer, data analysis. Now, we're going to talk about KPI and metrics, but before I move on, do you have any questions? Should I just keep talking? Shoot, okay, thank you. All right, okay. So KPI and metrics, big words, not really. <laughs> so now KPIs are key performance indicators and metrics are specific measurements that are used to track the performance of your products. Now, they sound like the same thing, don't they? And sometimes when you Google, some people call them the same thing. But what I've found as a difference between these two is that KPIs are specific, you know, measures to, to them, specific way to measure the success of your products in line with business objectives. So as a product manager, you're obviously working in a company or for a company or with a company. I don't know the, the word that it is, but your company will have business objectives, strategies. Is your, um, so these KPIs are, are measurements that, are, that align your, your product's performance to the business strategic goals. So KPI is the product goal aligned to business objectives, while metrics is the measurement by which we see how well the product is achieving these goals. And this might not make sense, so I'll give us an example. So KPIs, our KPI is user engagement. We want to see um, how well our users are engaging with our products, customer retention and satisfaction. This, this, these are big words, product revenue. But metrics are now what we use to measure those KPIs. For example, user engagement, we want to look at session duration, we want to look at active user percentage, that is um, DAU, DAU is daily active user, and MAU is monthly active users. We want to look at bounce rates. For customer retention and satisfaction, churn rates, you want to measure net promoter score, and I'll explain what these words are as we move on. And then how much, how much your product is bringing in product revenue. Want to look at your MRR, your monthly recurring revenue, how much you're making every month. Want to look at average revenue per user, that is how much is each user bringing in every month. 
then who wants to talk about customer lifetime value. So I hope this explains the difference between KPIs and metrics. Yes? Super. Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. It's keeping me going. <laughs> so, um, what's going on? Right. <clears throat> so, as a products manager, you want to identify your KPIs and metrics. And even though there are tons of product success metrics, there are so many out there, it's important for you to identify the ones that suit your product and your organization. And this, these questions will help you kind of know which ones you really need to go for. So when, at what stage of my product's life cycle am I determining these metrics? Is it, is it before you launch your products? Is it while you're, sorry, is it before you start developing your products? Is it while you're developing your products? Is it after you've launched your products? You want to know at what stage it is that you're determining this. So, um, you, also, you also want to figure out who are your target audience? Where is the data coming from? Who is going to give me this data by which I'll measure, I'll, I'll use these metrics? Then you also want to set goals. That is why the reason for, sorry, you want to know the reason why you're setting these goals and your metrics. Why are you doing this? And the last thing is what, after answering all these questions that I've mentioned earlier, you'll be able to identify a what metrics suit you and your products exactly. Now, can you still see my screen? Yes, Tony. Okay, okay. Um, so now I want to talk about the metrics that I've been talking, I've been mentioning since. So top metrics for a products manager. Now, MRR, monthly re recurring revenue. So this is like the total amount of revenue that your products or your company generates from your recurring subscription customers in a single month. I'll break that, break that down using this formula. So you want to see how many people are actually subscribing to our um, to our product. So let's say, for example, your product is Netflix, right? And Netflix has, is, is subscription based and there are tiers in the subscription. So there's like, I don't, I don't remember the names, but like there's basic and there's premium and all that. Excuse me. So now you want to see what is the number of our recurring customers. You now multiply that by average monthly revenue per customer. So for example, let's say, the um, premium is like 10 pounds or um, let's say 5,000 naira. That's what premium is for Netflix per person. You multiply that by the total number of recurring customers paying for premium. And then that way you have your, your money. So you, I mean, you have the total amount of money that your, your product is generating every month. Now, customer lifetime value. So this one is a little bit based on guesswork, but it's not guesswork per se, it is you anticipating the future. So it's the total amount of revenue your customer is expected to generate over their lifetime with you. And it will help you know how much to spend on obtaining a customer. So that's the, that's, that's the reason why you want to know your customer lifetime value. And I, and I think the next slide will be about obtaining the, um, how much to spend on obtaining a customer. But this one is basically, the C, your CLV is your average customer lifetime multiplied by their average customer value. The money that, like the period of time you think they will spend using your products times the amount of money they will pay using your products. So, <clears throat> Now, I said earlier that, that that CLV will help you to ca calculate how much you will need to spend on obtaining a customer. So, and this particular uh, thing I, I, um, is called customer acquisition costs. So it's the money, the amount of money you spend to acquire a new customer, basically. And this is calculated by 
your, the total marketing and sales expenses, that is how much you've spent on marketing, how much you spent on sales, whether it's ads, whether it's banners, whether it's uh, like paying, paying ambassad ambassadors or um, having an influencer or something, um, divided by the number of new customers you acquired. So that is how much you know. That, so for example, let's say we spent 10,000 pounds on um, marketing and sales. You now, and at the end of the day, we're able to get 100 customers. If you divide um, that, if you, if you do that calculation, you find out that you have spent about 100 pounds on acquiring one customer. Now, <clears throat> Sorry. Now, if you if you take that particular amount, that hundred pounds you spent it on one customer, you want to know how much that customer is now going to bring at the end of the day. So, like I I hope all this is making sense. So, um, this CAC, this um customer acquisition course is very important for. It's even good if it's best for you to do it before you start spending this money rather than calculating it after you've spent the money. So. Th so that you would know that, okay, we are going to be billing people 10 pounds per month for our products. I would have spent 1,000 pounds per customer. That, that mathematics won't work in the beginning for you. So I, I would advise that you, you do this calculation before you start, before you even need it, before you start doing the marketing and sales. <clears throat> Now, DAU is the total number of customers who logged into your products in a day. So it's called daily active users. This helps you to know how often people come into your product, people, how often people use your product. And the next one is monthly active users, which is total number of customers who logged into your products in a month. So sometimes you see that in January, about 20,000 people used our products, but in February, only 1,000 users logged in. You want to find out, what happened between January and February? What happened? What what made us lose customers? Or let's say that in January it was ten thousand people that came online, but in February it was fifty thousand people. You also want to know what was responsible for that rise so that you'll be able to maintain it. Then, sorry, churn rates. So, <clears throat> churn rates is a very popular metric that you know product managers use because it is the percentage of customers who stop using your products within a certain period of time. And what you don't want is people to stop using your products. So keeping this metric at the back of your mind helps you be on top of things to know. So churn rate is number of customers who stop using your products within a certain period of time divided by the total number of customers who started using your products at the beginning of a certain period. So let's say that, um, in the beginning, when you first launched your products, you had 1,000 users. But between January and February, those um, that number reduced to like 500. So you say 500 divided by 1,000 times 100. That is a percentage. Excuse me. So that's 50% of your customers that left, that stopped using your, your products. Excuse me, and that is the definition of churn rates, basically. So this metric is also very important for you as a product manager. I mean, all of them are very important. But I hope that these um, metrics show you um, how you be how data will help you get some some answers that will help you, you know, make sure that your product is 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 like is really good and solving problems. Now retention rate is <clears throat> almost the um, opposite of churn rates, because retention rate is the percentage of customers who continue to use your product. So these ones are going to be your champions at the end of the day. And how to calculate is, is the number of customers who are still using your products after a certain period of time, divided by the number of customers who started using your products at the beginning of the period. So you see, this is different from churn rates. It says that you're calculating, who are, you, are, you are trying to see that this is the percentage of people that stayed. So if your retention rate is higher than your churn rate, that is absolutely what you're going for. That is what you want to keep, you want to ensure that that, that um, level, that momentum does not stop. Like you keep going, like your retention rate is 
always more than your churn rates. Then the net promoter score, this is like a, I don't know, I feel like it's the big deal of, of um, KPIs and metrics because you use this to track your cost, customer loyalty and it helps to identify where your customers are unhappy and um, or if they're happy about your products and it would also help you see um, where you can make improvements to your products. So I'm going to explain how this, um, how this works. So NPS, Net Promoter Score, is the um, is percentage of promoters minus percentage of detractors. So promoters are customers who give a score of nine or 10 on the NPS scale. So for, <clears throat> for example, well, sorry, let me explain. Then detractors are customers who give a score of zero to six on the NPS scale. Talk to me, you have a question. Yeah, I wanted you to get water close by. Just get water. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, don't let me try to get water because if I should leave this room and my baby sees me, you will just start crying and he wants me to, to carry him and this whole class <laughs> will just come to an end. So let me just manage myself. Thank you. Thank you for me. Or that actually, thank you for making that note. Let me send a text to see if... <clears throat> Thank you so much. So, um, so now how the NPS works. So let's say that you've sent out a survey or you have like um, this user review or feedback button in your, I can see more. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Tofumi. So, um, so now let's say that you, you send out a survey and you've asked people to choose something from one to 10 on a scale of one to 10 or something of how best they like a particular feature or how best they like your product. So let's say it is even using the um, review button in your product or on your website. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so now, you want to take that and use the NPS to calculate what people are saying exactly. So for promoters, for example, if 50% of customers give a score of nine or 10 and 10% of customers give a score of zero to six, after carrying your, 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 your like after putting all your data together and you've seen that 50% of your customers said nine or 10 to a particular question, while 10% said zero to six, your NPS score will now be 50% minus 10% and that is 40. So in an NPS score, in a net promoter score, the, the ultimate customer loyalty metric, zero to 30 is considered to be bad. 30 to 70 is considered to be good. Then 70 to 100 is considered to be excellent. So if your NPS score is 40, that means, yeah, okay <clears throat> so excuse me you are just okay the um you know your mps your customer loyalty is just is middle so you want to be aiming for 70 70 to 100 for your um net promoter score and now coming to quality bug reduction rate so this this one is also really good for you to know um the percentage of bugs that you're able to fix within a certain period of time. And this is kind of, you know, um, it, it's a metric that helps measure the quality of your products. And if you go on App Store, for example, sometimes when I want to download um, an app, I find that users complain about bugs or they complain about something not working on their, um, and you would see the developer of that app, they will comment there and say, thank you for giving, leaving this feedback, this, 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 and this. So all these things, all these things point to the quality of that product. If I see more of that comment and I see that they don't even respond or something, I will feel like the app is not working well. Now, this metric is not something I'm going to be showing to your customers, but it's good for you to know how fast and how well 
that how, how fast and how well your the bugs in your products are um are being fixed and i hope everybody understands what bugs mean basically like a glitch or something in your products so um let me see the chat i can see it's increasing Okay, can the NPS be? Okay, I'll I'll answer that later. So um so number of bugs that are reported within the same period of time. No, sorry, number of bugs that are fixed within a certain period of time divided by number of bugs that are reported within the same period of time times hundred. That's so that's your percentage. So um that's I think that's the oh okay, okay, this is the final one. Well, with metrics, ROI. I don't talk about products. We're talking about money, 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 money. That's why we're not doing. We're not building the products for the good of the nation. We are building it to make money, and we want to know how much our product is giving us. Because at the end of the day, you know, your stakeholders want to know the ROI from from their, you know, the return on their investments. And the way to do this is how much people have paid in so far since you launched your products minus the total cost of production. And this cost of production includes the money that you spent paying like salaries, includes um, how much you paid for maybe servers, for um, different things that you use in building your, your products, um, launch marketing costs, everything that went into, into production. You want to deducts all, um, all that money from total value gained, especially within a period of time. So this is going to help you benchmark your return on investment, and this will definitely make your stakeholders happy. And that's what we are going for as products managers. So um, the question before I now, does it mean you're in the spirit? <laughs> Sorry, what's showing for for page? You know, when you asked what well, what do we understand by bugs or something, I think we can we classify that as one of the bugs that we probably might see. Um, well, showing for for page can 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 be like diff can can happen for different reasons. So I think sometimes, sometimes I've I heard this actually just last week, and I don't even know it existed. Sometimes developers intentionally introduce bugs to their system. I don't me, me sorry for speaking, Reba. Never heard it before. I didn't know that kind of thing happened. I thought bugs just happened like randomly, but sometimes developers introduce bugs to their system to break it and let them know um, in advance before they launch. If there if there'll be any problems. So I think bugs are okay. So um an example is this WhatsApp. I don't know if this happens to you, but sometimes you want to click on that um record record button and it doesn't work immediately. Or let's say you're on a call but it does not show someone else's video or picture, and later WhatsApp comes back to tell you that it's time for you to update, even though there was there is no new version of WhatsApp. That you you probably see WhatsApp seventeen point five point one point three, that kind of thing. So that's like that's an example of. Let me see. I can see new messages coming in. So this question, can the NPS be calculated using that rates this app feature? Most mobile apps have rates this app feature. Yeah, I believe so. Yes, that's even the, the best way to get your to get your data for your NPS. Um, so for example, so it, after a phone a, a call on um WhatsApp and WhatsApp feels like oh that, that call went without um, internet problems, WhatsApp will push a notification saying, give a feedback for this kind of thing. So this goes somewhere, and this is what they used to calculate their NPS at the end of the day. So, 
so yes you can use that very well and i i believe there's a way to even export your your um i haven't been on that end before but i believe there's a way to export your reviews and um turn that into you use the scale of one to ten the mps scale you'd have to do because i wanted to make the slides like very introductory and like not go too deep into it but if you if you check what the mps um um mps rating is you can use these feedbacks from um from reviews and from let, let's say if you have a website and there's like comment session and this five star rating and all those things then you can use that to calculate your nps in a dm when i scroll to see a past message it skips too far past like chat of this it goes suddenly appear yeah so this is i this is a very good example of a bug because whatsapp whatsapp the bugs on whatsapp and they're very plenty they need to buy mosquito repellents so um let's move on to analyzing and interpreting our data and you might hear me you know like repeating the same thing over and over again but please this is just to drum it into us and understand that we, we can actually do data analysis it's not even I used to run away from data analysis for a long time, but it's very interesting because it just it just opens your eyes to see what your users are doing with your products and you know like um and how you can improve your products. So, analyzing your research data, I know that we've all done our user research, and am I right to to conclude that? everybody did like a qualitative user research please in the chat section tell me the type of um the, your method how you gathered your user research what what form is your data in so for example was this surveys um interviews phone calls survey okay did anybody do phone call or like screenshot on other people's um User survey and one phone. Okay, surveys. I think surveys are very popular. Surveys then interviews. Okay. Okay, that's good then. Um, did anybody use Google Forms? Or okay, no. Before we get there, before screenshot feedback from users. Okay, yes, I really like using that as well. That screenshot feedback, I really like using it. Oh, Rose, you did as well. Use Google Form. Oh, okay, great. Okay. I'm really um <laughs> Tobi me said you should do giveaway. Gladys. <laughs> okay. So let's quickly talk about the steps in, an in analyzing your research data. And this is generally. So whether it is quantitative or qualitative, these are the steps in analyzing your research. And they are so straightforward so the first thing is you want to review your research data you've done surveys yeah you've done interviews if you've, you've um, taken screenshots of people's feedbacks what are you seeing you need to go through your data you need to read it bring it all together read it familiarize yourself with people's responses see excuse me see what people are saying about um about the questions that you've sent to them read it and read it i think reading it and reading it all over again will, will, will make you um, get familiar with what your what your users are saying and even make you understand and see more into you know into their responses and this is going to help you in identifying patterns and trends and you know themes common themes that come out from your data so for example you read it the first time the second time the third time you're able to see that oh i think that this particular feedback feedback one or let's say user one said the same thing as user 13 or user two said the same thing as user three that kind of thing then you need to categorize your data into similar themes so after you've reviewed it and you've gone through it you can now take your responses into similar themes do you get so your themes can be based on anything and we are going to do one together in this class um you're going to categorize them into 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 different themes so you can say that okay well, based on what i've seen i want to categorize them into need, user needs pain points satisfaction and expectation 
or you say you want to um if it is about let's say the question is about feature improvements and some people talk about oh we would like the the um would like to have a feature where i can phone my mom without using i can call my mom on whatsapp without using data and this is something that is similar to that you can say okay some um this group of users want to be able to use less of you know internet data when making phone calls something like that so you want to group them, you want to categorize your data to identify the similar things that your users are saying. And once you've done that, you are going to analyze the data. And this simply means identifying the key insights from your research, that is understanding areas where your product is performing well or areas where like it needs improvement. So, if you've grouped your data into user need pain points, satisfaction and expectations, obviously your user needs and pain points will be insights into how your products can do well. While satisfaction and expectations will be, ah, okay, we're doing very well, um, or, or okay, we're doing this very well, but this is how we can do better. And once you've put all that together, you can use charts or graphs or other visual aids to put your data, your findings together and once you've done this, the next thing is to prioritize the features that you want that need improvement. So, and these features will probably will most likely come out from pain points, user pain points, or user needs. Sometimes they come out from their expectations as well. Not sometimes, most times they, all, they also come out from their expectations because fine, they're happy with your products, but they expect more from it. And then you now begin to prioritize, you're going to prioritize, you know, or like your, your the features based on okay which one is important for our users right now and which one will have the biggest impacts on our product success and even more importantly which one can our funding and our resources which one can we carry right now so prioritizing is not just saying oh this is the best feature to have this this is like this will look good or feel nice or everything you want to see the features that will look good yes make the make best impacts at the same time maximize your costs so that you will not go and say you want to let's say you are building um an lms product a learning management system and your money cannot carry um this zoom type of functionality what they call it i forgot in virtual um, virtual class kind of functionality but because the user said it is their pain point now want to go and carry it on your head when you have money or your your software developer doesn't have the skills so that's not prioritizing well so you want to also prioritize based on your your available resources and skills then after that make recommendations because as a product manager you have people that you are reporting to you have stakeholders. So from your from your analysis, you want to say this are I think these are the features that are best for, for us to work on now and to improve our products. You now explain why. And in in um while explaining why, you are making reference to the data that you've you've collected. So they know that it's not because you feel like spending money or it's not because you just feel like or you just or you've seen it from another person's app and you think it's a good idea no you're making if you're making a data-based um recommendation this so let for example you say fifth we carried out a survey 35 percent of our users are happy 50 percent are saying they would like this and this is why we think this is the best time now looking at our budget as well we think that we're able to to prioritize these features blah 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 and make that recommendation and present your report. You create a report summarizing your analysis, your findings, your recommendations, create the reports and share these reports with your stakeholders. Now to our assessments, and I, I know that that is why um, this topic is coming up because you've already carried out your user research. It is now time for you to make sense out of what you've gotten and it can be a daunting task because especially with surveys or even interviews people say different things you might have transcribed your phone conversations into text but how do you put this together in an excel spreadsheet and make sense out of it now i want to introduce to us thematic analysis and thematic analysis is specifically for qualitative data analysis and it is used to identify pat patterns themes and insights from 
large sets of unstructured data like customer feedback, survey responses, or user reviews, or like I said earlier, phone calls and all that. Let me see the chat again. Okay. So, um, survey responses or user reviews. So thematic analysis is a way to bring all your unstructured data together and get percentage, get number from it. For example, you know, if your question was on a scale of one to 10, choose this and they choose nine, they choose 10, they choose six, they choose five, you know, that would be easier to analyze. But let's say you are on the phone with someone saying that, oh, what do you think about this product? And they say, mm, I'm happy about this, but I think that you can improve. I don't like the way that I have to scroll to the bottom before I can click on add to cart. You know, that kind of a thing, you cannot put a number to it, but you still need to analyze it. You still need to get a report out of it. Now, I've already mentioned some of these things before, but I'm going to like, um, dive into thematic analysis and i'm hoping that this is going to help you to work with your um, user research data that you already have now before i go on can someone volunteer to borrow us <laughs> one of their user research questions and what i'm going to do is to create a google form and um everybody we will, all of us on this call will go and answer that google form I will export the responses to a spreadsheet and I will now explain to us how we can do a thematic analysis so that it will make more sense to us like that. Is that okay? Do we support us? Yeah, so um, I think it would be nicer to have someone who maybe worked on a product that maybe almost everyone on this call uses. Okay. Okay. YouTube, um, we have YouTube, Zoom. So for me, what did you work on? WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Okay. WhatsApp. I, I think we should go with WhatsApp. What do you think? Yeah, WhatsApp. Yeah, is WhatsApp a is a good idea. All right. Um, so for me, can you share the link to your? And I think she has to add you as an editor so that you can have access to the spreadsheet. Okay. No. Okay, so no. what I want to do is, um, she will just send a, a just one question, and everybody okay. will answer that just that one question. Oh, okay. All right, so me, let's have one question in your um, form and then we will do all. So are we answering in the chat box? Um, once she sends, she should please send the question to, um, send the question, the one she sends it, I'll create the Google form. Okay. Um, and then I'll send the link to the Google form here. Everybody will fill it then. We will, um, we will now work on it together. Perfect. So I want us to do that first before I explain um, thematic analysis so that whilst I'm explaining, the responses will be, will be so when, when it's time to work on it, we can just kick off. Tofimi, you want to speak? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what am I sending to you now? Well, just one question out of your, your survey. Oh, okay. All right. Um, let me copy out all that sent to you. Okay, thank you. Please check your private chat, right? Um, you can send it to the to everyone. Done. Okay. Okay, this this one okay this is not bad so for me is it possible to ask um to send a question that will um you know this one is people will most likely say one hour two hours three hours something mm -hmm. that will be more um yes like a pinpoint it's question a pinpoint. Oh, okay. yes okay so let me send How about this? Okay. Everybody, what what challenges you face most when using WhatsApp? How do you find using WhatsApp to be? 
how do you find using WhatsApp to be is very open ended? What challenges do you face the most when using? Can we go with what challenges you face the most when using WhatsApp? Is that okay? Oh, uh, not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's okay. That also good. Okay. Um, I will just be one minute. Hopefully less. Okay. Copy and who runs the world, really? <laughs> okay. Have you seen the link? Yes. Did it send? Okay. Okay, please let your responses start pouring in. Okay, so now I'm going to move on. Emmanuel Opatola fastest finger award goes to. <laughs> Can you see my screen? I don't know what's going on with you. Okay. All right, so now we're talking about thematic analysis and it's exciting that we're going to work on one together on this call. So like I said earlier, you want to first familiarize yourself with the data, read through the data several times to get an overall sense of the content. Um, I cannot over explain why this is important because if you don't, if you're not, if you don't feel, if you are not familiar with this, with the data, you'll be able to identify like the recurring patterns or themes from the data. And that leads me to the second point, which is thematization. So you want to group them into similar responses and the responses that you think are similar, you want to be able to identify those recurring patterns. So for example, let's say this, um, this um, response, somebody responded that, oh, we want um, Uber to be able to serve us food when we book their, their you know, want them to give us um, souvenir when we use their, um, use their services, when I book a, um, a Uber. Or you say, oh, I'd like for Uber drivers to always turn on their ACs. Number three, you can say, I want all Uber drivers to be handsome men. I don't want ugly men to be Uber drivers. Now, you'll be able to now say, okay, these responses are kind of, you know, similar. And that talks about entertainment. Um, you can say, oh, these responses refer to um, what maybe future improvement. Or, I mean, it, it can be different things, but you'll find that people are giving different responses to a certain question. And you want to group all that together. Now, after that, you now code these themes. So you've already you found out of 1,000 responses, you found 10 recurring themes from, you've seen 10 people saying them, um, 10 themes occurring in 1,000 responses. So those 10 themes, you, are, you want to code them, you want to label them. Some people code, code using colors, some people code using numbers, some people code using, um, alphabets and I'll show us how, how that works. So there are different ways to code your um, code the themes. So once you've done that, it's, it's this is what literally where the analysis will now come. This is going to help you, you know, on this, um, excuse me, do a proper calculation of how many people said what. So for example, you'll be able to say 50 people talked about, um, um, the um, 
how, how should I say it? Okay, 50 people preferred Peter Obi, 10 people preferred Sinobu, 11 people preferred Oluwa Tony to be the next president of Nigeria. <laughs> Mini campaign. So um, after that, you will now do your behavior out. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just saying this. All right. Um, so once the data is coded, you can now start analyzing. And you can do this with Excel um, or any any spreadsheet you are used to. You can use it, you can do it with Google Docs. I'm sorry, Google Sheets. I think that's what it's called. But you can do it with any spreadsheet you, you use. And after that, after you finish doing your analysis, you use charts or any any other visual aid that you find like comfortable for you to make the report. So now let me go and look at how many people. Oh, 27 responses. That's not bad. 46 people are on this call and 28 people have responded. Should I, are we still taking responses or should I just, should I stop? Okay, we should get to 13, no worries. <laughs> Let me refresh just in case. It's still 28 responses though. I'm going to continue sharing. I just want to share my own screen at this point. Oh, okay. Can you see my screen? So we have 29 responses now. Go in, go in. Thirty one responses. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to export the um responses now. I don't want to link to sheet, so I want to link to hmm. Okay, I'm to add side system. Yes, thank you. Okay. And, uh, Sorry, I use the web Excel because I don't have money to pay to pay anybody to be using Excel on, on this laptop. Okay. Let me just do this. Honey, I think you can link to Sheets. And... I don't want to use Google Sheets. That's why mm -hmm. I want to use Microsoft Excel because of the formulas that I'll be using. I don't know Google Sheets formulas. Okay, okay, that's fine. Oh, sorry, well, let, let me import. I knew it. Let me just go the long way route. Then copy and paste. Okay, I'm going to what I'm going to do now is to delete the um the fields that I don't need, or I can just hide it. So there's email address, there's name. Okay, this 
just way too wide. Can you can you see um what I'm doing? Please stop me anytime if you think I'm going too fast or if what I'm doing is not making any sense to you. Okay, so um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, a huge thank you to all those people that responded. So now in our thematic analysis, we talked about familiarization. So we want to go and see what, what have you said. Can you see this very well or should I increase? I think if you're using your phone, you should be able to zoom in. I am currently zooming in. I think okay. it's good. Okay. Okay. So this is really short, so we can go through it together. So in, inability to pin more than three persons or groups, la lagging video, data consumption, poor quality in pictures, image quality. I can't record my calls. Inability to text the number without saving it on my phone excuse me, breaking in network while on call. When I don't know if those that are using their red icon off, the emojis needs to be updated. And sometimes even after I've updated my WhatsApp, some of the new features still don't get updated. Mm -hmm. Image quality reduction, trying to play a video and the audio doesn't work until I close my app and open again. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a bug. Backing up messages, technical glitches, when I'm watching a status, if an audio is playing in one video, when I move to the next status, the audio will keep on playing on the next status. Yes, <laughs> that happens to me too. Poor quality of sent received pictures, including status upload. Long time to load messages after being away for some hours, low quality of pictures and videos when posted. Sincerely do not face any challenge. I just view status mostly and go barely chat. <laughs> Okay, reducing pictures quality, uploading status, glitching audio sounds when viewing status, the reduced picture quality after posting on my status, not being able to copy part of a message, not being able to edit a status write up after posting it. I agree. Unable to pin multiple chats, network issues mostly. When on a WhatsApp call and one party receives a GSM call, the call begins to reconnect. I wonder if it's network issue. Yeah, it will help if the WhatsApp call can always go on hold and the reason for the call on hold is stated. Hmm, that's nice. Reduction in picture video quality. The mute option for group chat is irrelevant. It's frustrating. Um, scrolling issues. Whenever I want to tag a previous message and I scroll, the chat jumps too fast. Inability to use WhatsApp when a local backup is running. Hmm. Updates. I can't pin statuses. When watching a video status and I leave, I say, yeah, the video play even after leaving status. Not being able to see status about me and privacy. Get game. Now, please let the chats. A huge pain profile from this is the picture quality. Yes. Image quality is frequent. Yes. The audio thing on status just started. Hmm. Why must you know? I, oh, sorry. Most of us, the manager, are good for. Oh, I should increase. Is it better now? Pinning issues is also frequent, yes, yes. So what we need to do next now is, just going to do this because I'm a lazy, lazy bone. And, edit and put theme, themes here. Then I also put, code here technical glitch yes audio glitches thank you pinning issue so 
image quality good so we're already naming some of our themes so this one someone has already mentioned um chats what should we call it chat spinning <laughs> doesn't have to be anything that is that is fancy please let's do this together i'm looking at this chat box then lagging video video glitch data consumption Okay, let me change this to pin. Just pin chat data consumption. Data consumption. We'll just call it data consumption like that. I wonder why this is like this. Consumption. Then poor quality image quality. same we um, can't record calls what should we call this so um because my brain is 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 on freeze phone call phone call efficiency yes phone call because there's something else that is mm -hmm. phone call efficiency um inability to text the number without saving it on my phone mm. did we see something like that earlier i think that's the only one yeah i think that's the only one So yeah, we'll just call it um, um, contacts or something. Contacts. Um, breaking in network while on call. Yes. Um, so should we should we call that phone call efficiency or should we call it call? yes phone yeah. phone call efficiency yeah i think it's phone call efficiency as well so when i don't know if those that are using their red icon off i, I don't understand you won't come and explain yourself since you want to do i'm born knowing people turn off their <laughs> i don't know what he's trying to say those of us that use them um, that turn off red privacy yeah, yeah. He wants to be able to know. Come on, come and talk. See, I think I'll to... just call it privacy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The em the emojis need to be updated and sometimes even after so this is like a like glitch, a general glitch. So what do we call it now? An update glitch. Yeah, update glitch. So image quality, image quality again. Video and the audio doesn't work until I close my app. So video, excuse me, backing up messages. So what does backing up messages mean? Is it, is that a good thing or a bad thing or? I don't know, it's not really specific. Yeah, it's not very specific. What do you okay. also, what do you mean by technical glitches? Olushe yeah, Rukoyat, I expected much more detailed answer. Minus 10. Because what? <laughs> Sorry, I have I have something to say about that um backing up message. Maybe the person is trying to talk about storage. Or what do you think? Mm -hmm. No, I think storage is different because for me, my WhatsApp was at a time about 24 gigabytes, and I had to uninstall and reinstall it that's one issue another issue is that when you want to back up your previous messages sometimes mm -hmm. it takes so long and you just have to stay there and, yes. you can't it. and then you end up not backing it up because it's taking so much time so mm -hmm. i think i don't know i think the person will be in the best place to explain. to explain yeah it can mean it can mean so many different things sometimes and when you come across this kind of data i think the best thing to do especially because i know people can actually give you this this um, kind of response to your survey and the best thing to do is to note them as unspecified and you'll go back to it later to pick it up 
you can pick it up by contacting the person again to get like a better response, especially when you know who the person is and you have their contact details. So you need to like, I'll just name this unspecified so we can go back to it later. Then technical glitches. I, I will just leave it as technical glitches as well, but or even unspecified, so that we can go back to the person to find out what exact specific um like technical glitch are you experiencing. Then um please let's be faster than this. It's already seven o'clock. So um when I'm watching a status, if an audio is playing, yes. Yeah, so let's call this status glitch. Poor quality image quality. Long time to load messages after being away for some hours. I'm going to insert insert row here because this contains two responses. And I'll divide this into two. So long time to load messages after being away for some hours. Um, is this data? Is this data consumption or um data consumption? What do what do we think, please? Long data time consumption. I, I think this is also a sort of storage issue. I don't think yeah. it's data consumption. There's this thing that happens where if you've been away for too long, it'll be saying this message is still loading or something. Yeah. Sometimes you actually never recover the message. You just see this loading. I think that's what the person is trying to say. I think that's more like an internet thing. Is it really internet or or backup? I would say it's backup issues. Backup, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think we we have a recurring backup issue now. Backup issue. Yeah, Elizabeth, is a backup issue. Yeah. Okay. So low quality of pictures and image quality. I, I think people are very are generally angry at WhatsApp because WhatsApp was trying to, you know, help us to manage our our space, but we're not begging them. <laughs> oh no. I think it affects um creators or creatives mostly yes. and owners. Actually, makeup artists, they always cry every time I'm photographed. <laughs> oh, let's say you've done photo shoots and it's time for it to not it. You have to like send it as a document. I don't know why my control V yeah. is not working. Yeah. Oh, no. See. Okay. Well. I think I just do it on that same. I can't believe what just happened. Did what happened? Any, I don't know. I think my it just cleared. Hey, hey, hey let me come and cry. <laughs> hey, again, again. I think, I think the tab is still open. Is that not it up there? Yes. To your left. This, this is it. okay. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> let me just cook what I buy too bad. Why? What end is what? Oh, goodness. So, so this is positive, like yeah, no positive feedback, feedback. Positive. positive. No, it's not necessarily positive. So I'll just call it no feedback. Reducing pixel, this is image, status, glitch. How this sounds when filming status, status, image. Not being able to. Copy part of a message, not being able to edit it. it up. Okay, these are two issues again. Please work this time. Thank you. Okay. So, not being able to copy part of a message. Do we have anything on chats? so far and what can we even call this not be able to edit the status i can just call this although it's not a glitch but just put this on the status um not being able to copy part of the chats chats function or something 
okay um unable to pin multiple chats yeah we had oh, pin... chats okay pin chats yeah yes we already had pin chats up there so network issues mostly when on a whatsapp call and one party receives him da, da, da. so this is like okay. a... sorry i said phone call efficiency yeah yes reduction in picture image the mute option for group chats is <laughs> on this i find this very true this person is um tossing me say so annoyed she sounds so pissed <laughs> she's speaking in my wow. voice if you grab the neck <laughs> or the collar of the PAB chat of Google. <laughs> oh, goodness. So the mute option for for group chat is irrelevant. So I think this is also like chat function or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So scrolling issues. When I want to tag a previous person, I scroll the chat jumps too fast. Yeah, I think. This one is back up, but this one scrolling issues. Mm, I would think it's also a chat function, honestly. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Updates. What does updates mean? Technical like... documents. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put this as unspecified because it doesn't really. So, status. Do you watching a video status and I leave status? I've been able to see status, status, privacy, unspecified, because I don't know. I'm not sure what that means. <clears throat> so if if this was really my project, I'll be going back to this person, to to these people, to um, brief us. You raise your hand. So, um, I... Sorry, is Rufus your last name? I'm so sorry. When I said not being able to see a status about me, it's not necessarily you know, someone can post about me and I have. It's glitching. I can't really hear. Is it just me? Um, I think you should type it in the chat box. I think our network is lagging or not really clear. I can't hear clearly too. Okay. So, Pritchie, do you want to put it on in the status? I'm so sorry. I, mean, I think I called her last name instead of her first name. Yeah, it happens, my dear. Okay, she said she will type. Yeah. Okay. So all of it is gone. Yeah. Okay. So um the next thing now is to code our our themes so we've already seen like recurring patterns this is network issues what did we call network issues generally mostly i'll just leave this as internet issues okay so now it's time for us to code our our themes right and like i said you can do this in several ways but the way i find really easy is using um maybe a, an alphabet or a letter to to code so i'm going to call so on on apart from the spreadsheets on the side you want to bring like okay let me just do that instead of explaining Oh, you wish you could be tagged in a status. Oh, that makes sense. That sounds like a feature improvement, status feature improvement. Yeah, that would be a really, that is spoke my mind. <laughs> Okay, and please, you know, it's very easy for us to think that some of these things are unrelated. You don't have too many themes, especially if you can bring it under one. 
on that one particular theme. And you know that, okay, all these things are in one theme. I'm, I'm going to group them together at some point. Please, it's, very, it's going to be very easy for us to um, like, want to say, oh, yes, although this is phone call efficiency, but hey, it's a particular feature. So I won't call it phone call efficiency feature syndrome. <laughs> Please, let's be care very be careful when we are um, when, when we are doing our things. So with our codes, I think because for, the, okay, there was one that I did, the last time I did this, what I did was to use the first letter so P, V, D, but this is, that's very tricky here because we have different words that start with P. There's, um, there's um, what do they call it? There's phone call efficiency, there's pin chat, there's privacy. So that is going to really, that's not going to help us at all. So what I'm going to do in this case, just to make my work really easy and fast is to copy all of this and put them in a new spreadsheet. So I'm going to put this here. Oh no. I'm going to put this here. And then I'm going to remove duplicates. Oh. I think you can do that using, oh, right. You can do that using, um, okay, you can actually. Interested. Remove duplicates. Okay. So now, please, can you, so two people have raised hands. Or was it a mistake? Um, Tony, I think you can go on so okay. that doesn't distract you. Please, if you have questions, just drop, drop them in the chat box, please. Okay, that would be better. Back. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I want us to use like the alphabet D using A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. So now we know that pin charts so you have your legend here in your sheets too and but your sheets one is where your data the data you're analyzing is so anywhere you find pin charts will put a video glitch and all that i'm still going to copy that across here because i'm only using one screen so it's like to be easy for us to see just copy that here and I don't even know why to get it before so pin chart is a video glitch is b c D E F phone call efficiency is E as well. G privacy is G updates H image quality D B. I missed the letter. She did. Where? Yeah. It's correct, I beg. Two Ds? No, 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 no. They are not two Ds. No, they're she's not two not, Ds. She's not matching the... She's matching... Um, I'm the, matching... The codes. With the codes. So image quality is D as well. No feedback is L. Image quality is D. Status glitch is J, J, D, chat function M, status glitch J, pin chat is A, internet issue is N, phone call efficiency is what now? E, D, chat function is M, M, backup issue, K. Unspecified is I 
status glitch J, J, status feature is O, and unspecified is I. Okay, super. So we, we've already coded our data. I'm going to remove this from here. So we've coded it right now. It's time for us to do analysis. We want to see our themes and how many times they have appear in this. So I'm going to copy this again. Just going to copy. I don't know why I did it again. Okay, now there's the um, Excel count if, I don't know if we know this, and I hope I remember it. So there's the Excel count if function. So what we want to do is we want to count how many times these things occur, right? To have our numbers, to have, so instead of counting one by one, pin chart occurs one, two, three, four, like that. So we want to count if, so the first one pin chart starts from A, right? So this is F2. I don't know if you are very well, if you know how to use Excel very well, but you see F2 and we're going to drag this down all the way to the end of our data. So this is F38, it should upload here. So count if F38, and then what you want is to count A, right? For pin charts, because it's pin chart is A. So to F3, you need to adjust it. Sorry. Oh, it went from F2, thank you. And then you close, but well, I want to lock this so that we can drag, we can drag the, I'm going to, Lock this is in the other side. So you see that automatically gives us two because in our data, A appears twice. And I think that I, I want to try this. I don't know if it's going to work, but hopefully it does. Oh, no, it doesn't work. Okay. So we are going to drag it down. And um, this is very manual, but I'm hoping that there's there should be an easier way to go about this B. Then change this to C. It it's automatically updates your data. Is what I'm doing. Do you understand it? Is it making sense? Please let me see. Yeah, it feels like a, a starter class for. Excel. Equal. <laughs> the right side. Equal. 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 So to lock it, she added that dollar sign basically. <laughs> yes. So um, so now this has given us the total number of times image quality appeared in our in our data. And this is literally like this is just explaining to us that okay, this is something we need to focus on if this was for your products. So you see that okay, image quality is something that many people are, are complaining about, right? And if you check the total, if you want to do your is equals to sum you'll find out that this total is the same as, excuse me, I'm so sorry. It's the same as um, the total number of responses that we've gotten. So this is what you use and, um, oh, right, okay. I think I'll, I'll try that some other time. Thank you for saying that. Maybe if I double clicked, it, it would have worked. So um, the next thing to do now is you want to create a report out of this and there's the um, insert pivot table or charts. 
on sorry i just clicked the wrong thing i'm i'm looking at the time now and i've seen that will be my um overrun this class but um i'm hoping that we've gained something out of it so you can see you can, from like this way you can prioritize another way to even look at it if you don't want to um if we want to okay if we want to um arrange this the, you can use excel to organize your data to show um according to filter based on um ascending sorry should have copied all of this together so filter based on ascending oh i see what happened see this out All right, it's, it's official. I don't know how to use Excel in web and it's very annoying. Um, let me see if it would work better like this. If I copy and paste here. Add, right, the formula changes. I want to try to insert a um, chart so that we can so insert a chart and where is our chart from our data is from sheets one l10 so this is from sheet one so should be from here to here Wow, <laughs> I'm all blown. <laughs> okay, so this so this is showing you straight up like you can copy and paste this into your presentation to show using a bar chart. You can change this your um the way it looks. So you can you can really play with like using this on on the side. For me, for me, just raise the hand. Yes, sorry. Um, well done. Please, how did you come about this? Because it just looked like I carried my eyes away from my phone for one second and then boom, I saw chats. Oh, so I really don't know how you did that. Okay. So let me go over it again. So um, what I did was in the insert parts, there, there are different ways to um, create a um, a chart. It depends on how you want your chart to look. So I just clicked the simple one here and I double clicked on it, clicked on data and to select my data, I came here, I highlighted the data that I want to represent and I clicked on this green button here. And so it puts my data into this chart. You can rename this for your presentation to say, um, WhatsApp data analysis. So, and you can copy this into, you can also rename this series A um, bit, the, the name. But this is, so you can copy this and put this into your reports, basically. Is there? Any other question? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, and I am going to, I'm coming because I, <laughs> let me share. So now we've come to the end of the class and I want to show you my last slide. Where is it? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Glad to see you.
Oh my God, guys, can we just appreciate? I feel I I wish this was a physical class so that you will see how much we are clapping for you right now, <laughs> guys. We just appreciate a lot, Tony, in the chat box. I think this is that these are still being our most hands-on class ever. Like, and I love that it was so hands-on. Oh my God. Oh my Thank God. You. Oh my God. See, you guys, if you know all the imposter syndrome that Ola Tony did <laughs> on telling me she was not doing it herself. Telling me she was not know how to what this really <laughs> yeah, just my shit. Really <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know that she won't like me doing this for her, but I remember one of the case studies that I had to work on when I was looking for my first role, or my second role, actually, I think early 2021 or late 2020. Oluwatoni was on a phone call, a video call with me for about five hours where we broke down my case study. I eventually got that internship. It was an internship with a company in Germany. And I just appreciate you guys. Guys, community is very, very important. Know your people. Don't just have friends that you'll be sending each other memes on Instagram, even though we also do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to my to my rambling. Can you, and can you put your LinkedIn profile? LinkedIn profile, okay. Link, yeah, in the oh, chat box. Wait. So for me, why, why are you like this? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> people like that, your name used to enter noise makers <laughs> list and <laughs> put <laughs> <laughs> on so guys i think we already know what the assessment is going to be um tony do you want to take them over it because they've already done user research yeah. and some of them have also given a report of their user research i would say maybe they should do a thematic analysis of their mm. user research results yeah, yeah. So I think that works. For some of you that maybe did not get enough responses, you can maybe go back and get more responses. I think it's going to make your data look, I mean, your results even look much more detailed and better. And I think the amazing thing about this um, thematic analysis is that I think it can work for both, correct me if I'm wrong, can work for both. Um, it should be able to work for quantitative. What do you think? Well, I think it, it would work for any um, form of data. The reason why I really made it more qualitative is because that's the one that most most of us don't really know how to mm. um, like how to deal with because it's so unstructured. Mm, mm, mm. And people might feel overwhelmed with the response. Yes. Okay, guys. So I would ensure that I I put this in. A, I'll, I'll work with Oluwa to need to get the the full detail of your assignment don't worry this one is going to be very short it's going to be very it's not i don't think it should be hard for you to do yeah so um we will send the assignment documents to the group today or very early in the morning um that is number one number two our um our presentation your slide presentation is going to be on thursday by 8 p.m I'm sorry, no holiday for a dump PM, oh, my dear. <laughs> Our slide presentation is going to be on Thursday by 8 p.m. Um, I would love for you guys, Thursday, Rose, Thursday, 8 p.m. So please prepare to attend. Um, we're going to be judging based on, you know, eloquence, based on how beautiful your slide looks, based on the attendance of your group members. So don't just push the person that will be presenting to come to class. Yeah. I think I should actually stop recording at this point because I don't think YouTube needs this information. <laughs> um, I also think um, someone is raising their hand. 